Let's talk about Bill Gates in the next pandemic. Um, Bill Gates and the World Health Organization have announced when we will see the next pandemic. And they have a date for us. Uh, so get this on your calendar. Prepare, you know, plan your trips around this next pandemic right now. We'll have more on that in a second and the dates. But you'll remember Bill Gates and the World Health Organization previously held what was known as the 2001 event, event 201, sorry, event 201. Um, and it was about the two, event 201 exercise. It was a simulation involving a coordinated global response to a coronavirus that they held in a simulation just months before COVID-19 was declared a global pandemic. So they're pretty good at predicting this stuff. I don't know how they pull this off. How they yeah, both no, Fauci, remember Fauci told Trump in 2017, not that there could be, not that there might be, but there would be a pandemic during his presidency. Yes. Yeah, and Obama ran exercises for it during his premise, uh, uh, presidency. Preg pregnancy. During his pregnancy. <laughs> during his presidency. <laughs> too. So, At the womb factory. <laughs> so they've just gotten together and they're doing it again now. Uh, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, along with Johns Hopkins Center for Health Security and the World Health Organization. I wish I was making this up, but this is this is not a conspiracy theory. They did this. And they just conducted their next pandemic tabletop exercise in Belgium. It's called the Catastrophic Contagion. Hey, honey, where are you going this weekend? I'm going to Belgium. I got a conference. Oh, yeah, what's it about? Uh, it's called the Catastrophic Contagion event. Oh, what are you guys going to be doing? Oh, we're just planning the next pandemic. Just getting everything ready. Getting cool. everything ready and locked up in the new virus and vaccines. We'll have vaccines ready to go because that's how we do this. We, we plan it. And then we, of course, have the vaccines ready to go. So this is the video that Bill Gates put together, along with the team, complete with simulated news reports like this. This is really what they're preparing for us. This video is called Get Ready. Watch. Catastrophic contagion of global challenges. Breaking news. Two Latin American countries alerted the WHO of several outbreaks of a new infectious disease that's mysteriously appearing across the region. Severe Epidemic Enterovirus Respiratory Syndrome 2025. Oh, so that's the name, guys. Just write this down. That'll be the name of it, okay? It's gonna Sears. Be Sears. It's going to be called the Severe Epidemic Enterovirus Respiratory Syndrome in 2025 is when we'll see it, Okay. Now, it says at the bottom this is a fictional scenario, but, but come on. <laughs> Over the past six weeks alone, there have been 500 confirmed or suspected cases reported. The virus could cause a severe pandemic if early containment and mitigation efforts are not successful. The pandemic in this type of situation and trend uh, would be a risk for the global health security. Pandemics are inherently political, financial, and so much broader. We have not spoken on the leadership in the country. And I think that we need to be also very careful. We cannot decide a lot of things without the leaders be involved and agree on that. Oh, really? That's an interesting point that she's making. Oh, instead of unelected globalists making decisions, she's saying, wait a minute, we need to have our leaders involved in this discussion. Wait, so the the white guy was the um, dissenter, like right. the, the one we're supposed to say, oh, yeah, he's a naysayer. We don't agree with him. And right. then she shuts him down. She shuts him down. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, go ahead. There is no substitute for national leadership. It's important to support the local response or the national response. Training those that are in these areas first, enabling them with the tools, protecting them, and if needs be, regional solidarity first. At this stage, communication is key, and communication should include not just scientists with data, but also social, religious, and political leaders. Trust. This is an essential issue. And Trust was broken among countries, between populations and healthcare systems, between healthcare systems and governments. I'm very sorry to say that in uh, 2025, we need to strengthen the health system. WHO needs to be a voice for the voiceless. No one is safe until all of us are safe. As of today, there have been an estimated 1 billion cases worldwide, with more than 20 million deaths, including nearly 15 million children. 
Countless millions are alive, but left with paralysis or brain damage. Oh, okay, so that's how it'll... So, I'm sorry. You hear those numbers? A billion people, okay? Mm -hmm. M millions of children and then those who are left will have uh, brain damage and paralysis so that's that's what we'll have that's that's how this is going to unfold the most successful countries are those which invested in preparedness and trained for this moment years in advance this included having full-time pandemic preparedness and response teams which conducted detailed operational planning and routinely tested those plans through exercises and drills Okay. I should also point out, I didn't recognize her at first. This is Jean Reserve. She used to be a CNN anchor. She used to be a CNN reporter. Did she? Yeah. So now, I mean, just, just goes to show you like the cozy. I didn't recognize her at first. She's, her hair is, she's older, gray, and I didn't recognize her. Uh, but uh, she was a CNN anchor reporter. And this goes to show you the coziness between the mainstream media and the, the likes of like the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and the the the, the World Health Organization to, to uh, you know, to well, add I, credibility to a message that they're trying to get out. Right? Yes, but we are also we have been freelance journalists before, too. And you realize that she's just taking a contract job. You know, okay. we shouldn't begrudge someone taking a paying job. Who's So. All right. And I, and I saw this circulating online really quick. Um, and it, I, I found it on YouTube and I showed Jennifer cause I was like, this is like crazy that this was before COVID hit that they were playing this. And now you can't find it on YouTube. Like, and I watched it on YouTube. So it's, so after it started to gain traction, it was scrubbed from YouTube. And now I, I believe you can only find it on rumble. This video. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Okay. You said this was before COVID cause this just came out. Oh, this is the new one. Okay. So you've not seen the old one then. Oh, I saw they, they no, did this. I never saw the old one. Okay. No, no, the, this is okay, the new I'll one that they that just show released. You that because, yeah, okay, because they did the exact same thing before COVID, and it was basically this exact same thing. They laid out that it was coming. They had news people. They had the table of, of people talking about it. It's like basically the exact same thing. Yeah, I couldn't find that video. I mean, I showed you the, the, the event 201, but no, this is the new one that just came out. This is the brand new one oh, that wow. they just did in Belgium for the 2025, the new pandemic. The toll might have been much less. There it is, catastrophic contagion from October 2022. And now 2025, so that's what it'll be. It'll be the Sears, the Sears infection, the Sears virus. Well, they said that was an enterovirus. They said Enterovirus. that was an enterovirus, which is uh, enterovirus, which is a, uh, that was uh, polio, was an enterovirus. Oh, good. So And COVID was not? Interesting. No. No, Neurovirus. COVID was a corona. Oh, oh, okay. It's a, that's a type of. So, yeah, the same people behind Event 201 that David was just talking about from a few years ago uh, took place almost three years ago to the day, by the way. They completed their, their new one now, and, and they say that this is going to originate in Brazil 2025 and get ready. So in addition to Bill Gates, the 10, and, uh, 10 current and former health ministers and senior public health officials from Senegal, Rwanda, Nigeria, Angola, Liberia, Singapore, India, Germany participated in this simulation. Uh, they had pre-recorded news broadcasts, as you saw, and then they had the virus simulation and they tested the rates of, of spread and how this would affect children and, and sweep across the globe and how they would you know, go into lockdowns and what they would do um, and preparing, of course, for uh, for vaccines as well, making sure that those are lined up perfectly with this. See, this is the beauty of what these guys do, right? They know it's coming, so then they just develop the vaccines that they can sell to us, and they have them ready to go right there. Yes, but you can see there's a clear narrative of, like, you know, naysayer guy, you know, saying, well, these pandemics are political. We're not going to hand over power. Absolutely not. And then the sort of cooler heads in the room prevail, like, no, we need a global response. We need centralized power. No, we absolutely. No, you unreasonable guy. They they played him as a caricature, right? Um, and then they showed other people saying absolutely. And and it's interesting that they have people who look like they're in, from African countries when the African Union has said we do not want to participate in centralized power through the World Health Organization if there's a next pandemic. We absolutely will not be handing over power this way. Yeah, that's well, and one thing right, that I said. Few African nations that stood up and actually voted that down. Go ahead, David. Well, I was going to say, like I was saying from the very, very beginning, and we were talking about it on the show that if there was actually a global pandemic, 
then these companies would have got together with world leaders and they would have created this vaccine and spread it to the world free of charge because they are profitable enough. The government could have paid for it to do that. But when they made it so that they created basically nine new billionaires and it was so profitable for them, that shows you the true motivation that it it was nothing about a pandemic. Right. Yes. And this is the same thing. It's like, yeah. Go ahead. Mrs. Mom in the chat is saying, do you see that they're saying targeting kids? Because that was the piece that I feel like Mm. that was missing from COVID is that we realized that it was not particularly um, terrible on children. And so this is this is what it's like trying to show us that would be different, because if we got another COVID related disease, we might not all mobilize the same way we did the first time. Right. But if it's it, oh, it's going to hit our kids. Oh, it's you don't just live with long COVID. You live brain dead. Well, oh, that's the polio you know, thing can't. that Philip's talking well, about. Right. right. That's yeah, I was going to say, I wonder I wonder if that's why they chose an enterovirus, because the because they, they wanted to it just wasn't scary enough. It's not scary unless it involves children. Right. right, and then you and so then you make that's why they a polio down. vaccine to your point earlier as part of a routine like. Well, it route. is now. Polio yes. is now part of your routine shots. What yes. I'm saying is, whatever new thing that they create would become part of your new inoculation schedule for children. Yes. So this 2007, they had a lockdown in place. We learned this week. Um, let's do some, some good digging here. Um, <clears throat> we learned this morning, thanks to some good reporting by Will Jones, that the U.S. government had a plan in place for lockdown since 2007 to lock down and wait for a vaccine again since 2007. It's a pandemic plan produced by the National Infrastructure Advisory Council. It was hosted by the, on the CISA website. It lays out banning any large number of gatherings, Definitely closing schools, non-essential businesses, institute work from home policies and quarantine exposed and not sick in, exposed and not sick individuals quarantine those people too. The aim is simple and clear to slow the spread and wait for the vaccine. And here's a quote from the plan. During a pandemic, the goal will be to slow the virus's transmission. Delaying the spread of the virus will provide more time for vaccine development while reducing the stress on an already burdened healthcare system. So that was in place. That's been in place. Thanks to Will Jones for uncovering that. So there you go. That's uh, get ready. 2025 Brazil and uh, mark your calendars now. Make sure you plan your vacations accordingly. Okay. I don't want to do that, but I don't either. Thank you so much for watching this segment here at Redacted. We are live every day at 4 p.m. Eastern time trying to share the stories that the mainstream media will not cover. You should also come over and join our community of Redacted Rebels over at Redacted.inc. That's our private locals community where we can share exclusive content that we simply cannot share here on YouTube. Come over and join the rebellion together right now by going to Redacted.inc. We'll see you next time.